Power by Ecotech. Hey everybody, this is Tommy from Worldwide Corals and welcome to episode five of my Elos Dream Reef build. And there's a lot to go over. Some of the stuff we'll get into is there's no more cycle, no more ugly phase. So we got some corals and fish. A really sweet lid from Tyler at Top Lids. There's an aquarium controller from GHL and a GHL doser. And I get to fire up the Ultra Reef Protein Skimmer for the first time. So let's get right into it. So using the Brightwell Dry Rock Starter Kit, it took about seven to eight weeks for the nitrite and ammonia to be at zero. And then there was enough presence of nitrate that the tank was cycled. So then I slowly added some fish, a couple chromis, and a few small orange skunk clowns, and then started bringing over some corals that I had from my system that I'm breaking down. So I have a small frag tank that has some corals that I collected uh, over the couple years working at Worldwide Corals. Some of the corals that I put in the tank are hammer euphilia, we got some Aiken lords, a trachy, a couple scullies, a large blue maxima clam. I really like fabias, so I have a couple types of those. Can't go wrong with the Duncans. And I have a few SPS corals in here as well. Also, once the cycle is finished, I did a large water change with the new salt. And it's a new salt to me, but it's not exactly a new salt on the market. And it's the salt by Elos. And not only does it replenish all the trace elements and hit those levels for a reef tank for calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity, but it dissolves pretty quickly and it doesn't leave behind any residue. So, so far I really like it. I'm gonna keep on using it and see how it does as I add more fish and corals. So as you guys know, I like fish. I'm gonna add a lot of different variety of fish, including wrasses, which like to jump. And I needed something to cover the tank that looked good. So I reached out to Tyler from Top Lids and he made one of the craziest custom one piece lids that I've seen. Uh, what I really love about it is that the evaporation cover has all the partner logos on it. So it looks fantastic. And normally I wouldn't run an evap cover, but because this tank is so big and because there is a lot of evaporation, it's supposed to bring it down 70% or more, which would be really helpful day by day. But not only that, if I'm out of town and I can't fill up the Luna Reef automatic top off reservoir, I know that if I have that evap cover on there, I'm not gonna be using as much RO water to replenish in the tank. All the lids we do right now are made out of polycarbonate. That is a certain type of plastic that's similar to acrylic, um, but it has a few key differences. So um, if you look at this lid, it's very clear. It looks like acrylic. The main difference is if we made this lid out of acrylic, it would potentially bow up like this at the corners um, to where basically these corners here would be like this and there would be holes that fish could jump out. It would rock back and forth. It's just, it's not the long-term solution that, that you generally are after if you're gonna build a long-term system. Um, so it doesn't do that. It doesn't haze with UV lights. Um, if you accidentally drop it on hardwood or tile, it's not gonna shatter. It's really hard material. The lids are something that's pretty customizable. You know, Sometimes you have lights on the sides of the tank. Sometimes you have them on the back. There's all different types of lights. Sometimes you have auto feeders. Um, there are different needs for you know, evaporation control, feeding. There's a lot that goes into it. Another cool thing that we did for Tommy is an overflow cover, right? So we can do overflow covers just like this and we can also engrave onto it. So if you want to like brand your tank with something special, then any solid piece of material that we have on the lid or anywhere, we can engrave on that. There's a lot of things that can go into lids like this. That is a fraction of the options that we have. Um, but that's just a little overview on top lids. Next up, it was time to install the GHL products. Now, if you remember from a previous video, I mentioned that I've never had an aquarium controller before. And after getting this thing all set up, I'm not sure why I never did it because it really is a game changer. To house everything, I ordered a cabinet from Adaptive Reef and we went with their GHL setup. So they had a custom light. They also have many other logos. Obviously we did the GHL logo and they have different compartments to fit all the GHL equipment. I also have a space on the bottom that I can add some more GHL products in the future as I upgrade. So I got the GHL Proflux 4 controller and the GHL doser. And to be honest, I was a little intimidated about setting these things up, but what's really nice is GHL has a really great YouTube video showing you how to install it step-by-step, step, holding your hand, and it made it super simple. I think it's only 15 minutes long, so it really didn't take that long for me to set it up. There's still a lot of functions and stuff to set up that I need to go through, including a flow sensor that would be great for when I add the UV. I can really dial in how much flow is going through that UV to be efficient. Some of the things that I am controlling at the moment is the auto top off. Just added a CJ pump 
and the GHL sensors and added that to their power bar controller, plugged it right in, and now it controls the auto top off. There's a lot of great safety features on that. For example, you can set the time to when the pump should shut off so you don't spill water on the floor in case there's an accident like the hose gets loose or something like that. Overall, I've only tapped the surface on the controller, so I'll be adding more stuff, adding more functionality in future videos as the reef progresses. So one thing that I still need to do that I ran out of time is pretty much organized behind the cabinet. Uh, there's just a lot of wires, so I gotta do some cable management. In case I need to access something quickly, I could go back there and maybe unplug a heater or switch something out or unplug a pump, and I know what plugs go where. So I'll be labeling everything in the future. Since GHL is controlling the auto top off, I was able to fire up the Ultra Reef skimmer. That way I have a consistent water level. And as soon as I fired that thing up, it started skimming right away. Right now I have it set to skim wet and I can't believe the junk that it's pulling out. In the future, I'm gonna dial in the skimmer a little bit more so that way we get a thicker, darker skim mate out of it. Um, just <laughs> some nasty stuff. So it's doing its job. I'm really impressed with it. This weekend is gonna be Reef of Palooza Orlando. I'm gonna be working each day, running around, filming. So if you see me, come say hi. Also for the next episode, I'm gonna go down to Worldwide Corals to the farm and we're gonna pick out some beautiful pieces to put in this aquarium. Hopefully I'll get everything off the sand bed and glued into their proper places. And they have some fish quarantining for me. We're gonna have the Tang Gang come into the tank. Now I'm not gonna add them all at once, but there is a specific order to add the tangs that I got so that they uh, don't really fight, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. We really do read all of them. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode.